Wait for it. Fantasy from Earth, Wind, and Fire. I have a lot of fantasies. Everybody listening. My number one fantasy right now, I might change it. No non-prescription heroin and no non-prescription cocaine use in the United States. It's ruining a lot of lives. Let's talk about the first one. First slide. Heroin addiction in the United States. What's going on with that? I thought it was like the 1960s we used to hear about. You see that young lady on the left? Lives in Salt Lake City, Utah. The Deseret News, a newspaper in that city, identified her cycle downward toward that needle and that spoon. At 16, she started smoking marijuana, doing mushrooms, experimenting with methamphetamine. Now that she's 20 years old, she's hooked on heroin, injecting that substance into her body just to make it through the day. My question to everyone watching this particular segment is the following. Is that an absolute necessity to be alive in the world today, that needle and that spoon? I'll tell you an experience I had. There was a lady in my church. I asked about her daughter. My wife was there with me. And I said, where is your daughter? She said, she's no longer interested in coming to church because she's just going crazy. I said, ma'am, would you mind if we went to your home and looked at that young lady's room? We went to that lady's house, opened the door. The house was a mess. I said, your young lady, just looking at her room, your young lady's involved in drugs. The lady looked at me and said, no, I have a good daughter. She's great. She doesn't have anything to do with drugs. I disagreed with that young lady, and I took my daughter and my wife out of that lady's home. We went to the car. She came out to the car before we left and showed me a spoon that had been heated up with some residue and a needle. I said, ma'am, you need to find that young lady right now and take immediate action, or that young lady will be dead before you know it. She, weep, she wept in front of us. It was not a joke. It was real. And that was only me looking at her room. So what I'm saying to everyone, I believe that heroin addiction is in the U.S. and it's growing, and I have the data to support it. Next slide. This is an interesting study, again, by Deseret News. It shows from the 1960s and the dispersion or the dichotomy between men and women that use heroin. And what we're finding is that we're having an increase in women in the last few years in the 2010s. The gender distribution shows me that somehow, some way, young people are getting influenced from cigarettes, liquor, marijuana, down that slide into a heroin needle. And that sounds, oh, Andy, that's ridiculous. That'll never happen in my neighborhood. Well, my proposition to you is yes, it's happening, and yes, it's real, and yes, you can do something about it. Next slide. Oh, Andy, only the darker people use heroin. Some people call it darker. Some people call it non-white. Uh, I don't care what you call it. The bottom line is how you label these people. What is happening is a transition from these non-whites to whites. This is the data. I didn't make this up. The newspaper come up, came up with it, and it was actually an article called The New Face of Heroin Addiction. The new face is white, 90% versus 9.7%. What's going on there? Let's look at it a little deeper. Next slide. What is the mean age of heroin users? These are people that are called an opiate. What we're seeing here in the 1960s, it was 16 years of age. Now it's going up to 22. You see that young man in that picture administering his medication in a restroom? That's becoming increasingly popular. Why? Do you think there's more stress now than there was earlier? Yes, there probably is. It's just more technology you need to deal with. There are more issues which are more complex. There are fewer employees involved in high-tech jobs. Why is it affecting children? Why are they going to the needle? That's a question I have. Next slide. 
Here is a classic example of how these epidemics start. Like anything else, good or bad, there has to be a source. There has to be a transport system, and there have to be consumers. Let's look at one case that almost identically aligns with our current situation with heroin. Do we know, as a, as a society, in the 1980s there was a crack epidemic? Crack is a chemical derision of a substance, is a derivative of cocaine. Well, a very insightful investigative reporter had that same question. What's going on? Happening in, in the central part of Los Angeles, South Central LA. What is the issue? Well, Columbia was cart their cartels was directly shipping to South Central Los Angeles. After this young man, Gary Webb broke the story in the San Jose Mercury News, another individual came forward who was imprisoned for this cocaine marketing. People call them drug lords. He revealed that his source, his ultimate source of that transportation link was the United States government, the Central Intelligence Agency. And you think I'm making this up, right? That individual, you see his picture right there, Gary Webb, was found murdered slash identified as a suicide very recently after he broke this story. His book called Dark Alliance, and there's also a movie. Movies dis distort to entertain. But the fact is, it started in L.A. It went out to many major cities all the way to Cincinnati, based on the product coming from Columbia, transported through the CIA. Those revenues were then used to fund military operations. Anybody ever remember Oliver North? This is a real historical event. It's not Andy Marino making it up. How does this relate to cocaine? And heroin, Andy, that's ridiculous. That, like, that can happen today. We have government employees that are waiting for their retirement, working so hard to keep us safe. I dispel that, and I call that a lie. Next slide. In 2014, Afghanistan had a bumper crop of opium. Oh, that's great. That happens on the other side of the world. Doesn't it going to affect me or my children? That's a lie. It does affect you and your children. Anybody, that has, anybody in the military has been in, serviced in either Iraq or Afghanistan in the last few tours. What does that mean for everybody here? I'll tell you. One, your troops are, our troops are protecting these opium crops. And what does that mean? Does that mean they had a bumper crop last year? The United Nations identified in 2014 that they had the highest crop of opium that's been dispersed in the world that's ever been known. Heroin prices are down. What does that mean to you? Next slide. There are two things that affect these natural opiates and heroin products. One is government efforts to, to eradicate or destroy the crops. The other is the growth. So what I'm saying on the chart on the left, eradication has almost been, as a practice, eliminated. On the right-hand side, you'll see that 13,600 soldiers are staying in Afghanistan after 2014. Oh, what are they doing there? That's my question. What are American troops doing in Afghanistan? Some people have opined or opinioned that they're, they, are, they are there to protect the Oxycontin is one of the pharmaceutical products made, and this is the base product. I don't know about that, but I'm finding it very coincidental that a lot of operations are being funded, allegedly, through these opiates. I find that very disturbing. And I think everyone that's watching this show should found it also very disturbing. Next slide. This particular sequence of pictures is what's happening. I didn't invent this. I'm only sending out the facts and hoping that everyone listening will take some action. Let's look at that first slide on the left. What does that mean? You see American troops watching this Afghani harvesting his crop. Then you see those Afghanis mixing as a primary step prior to packaging the opiates. Then you see that map that shows various drug routes. 
Obviously, all of those are illegal, except for a very small portion, which is sent to pharmaceutical companies in the United States and around the world for our opiate and addicts, in some states, 25%. Then on the right-hand side, you see a very handsome young man being injected with heroin into his neck by his partner. I didn't take that picture. I pulled that off the Internet. Also, you see on the bottom right a picture of a young man injecting themselves with a needle to get their medication. Here is what my suggestions are. A, do not start the drug experience yourself. Now, that might be asking a lot. Maybe it's asking too much. But this is the slide that diagnosticians have identified. One, liquor, cigarettes, marijuana, cocaine, methamphetamine, and heroin. If anybody watches Cops, the TV show, you'll find a lot of them saying, the arrestees, oh, I just have a little pot. Well, that's great. They're breaking into your house to get more money to buy a little pot or to buy a little methamphetamine or to buy a little heroin. If you're already addicted, seek some treatment. That's the only thing that's going to save you unless you want to continue on down your slide. Here's another thing. Check your children's possessions. Just like that lady that I met at church, followed her back to her house, she finally confessed that her daughter was using a spoon and a needle. Question the government's involvement in drug cultivation. You can do that a lot of different ways. You can even do it personally and just talk to someone else. Talk to a soldier that's come back to Afghanistan and see if I'm lying, that they aren't guarding the poppy fields. I could be lying, but ask a troop, and they will tell you yes. And even the troops are given opiates. I don't know if you know this, the VA system does administer opiates, and even in the field. They don't give them one or two for a week. They give them a bag for 90 days. Ask homeless people which drug they prefer, and you'll be shocked by the answer. Some might say, oh, I just want a beer. I doubt that. Here is my plea to everyone watching this particular show. Yes, you can do something about this. Stop doing it. Stop using it yourself. Stop going down that slide. Make yourself stronger emotionally. Get some treatment if you're already addicted. If you know someone that's addicted, help them. Get off. Don't help them buy more. Check your children's possessions. Your children are our biggest possession, our prized possession of this life. If you find any indication of your children leading toward the heroin needle, stop it. Question our government's involvement in drugs particularly heroin in Afghanistan. Here's my last plea. Help us stop by help us stopping the money. Thank you very much.